Hi, I'm Aya, um, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm, um, I'm a big fan, of course, of make. I have a lot of people that are in the room, so I'm uh, very thankful to be invited to speak. Um, I actually got into engineering um, in spite of me. I uh, really did not want to be an engineer. Um, I was good at math and sciences, and so my family and my teachers uh, said I owed it to myself to become an engineer. Um, and so I hated every minute of it. Um, my first interaction with hardware was studying this, the Z80, uh, microprocessor architecture. It took us two semesters. Um, it was very obscure. It was very difficult. It took a long time, and it made me hate every second of it. And I spent the next three years of engineering trying to get out and trying to go into design and to architecture. It wasn't until I went to the Media Lab at MIT for my master's that I noticed that actually there is a lot of power in being an engineer, a lot of creative power that comes with knowing hardware and knowing electronics well. But I started to get very interested in this idea of how do you make electronics accessible? How do you make electronics as easy to manipulate as other materials, as paper, as cardboard, as pop popsicle sticks, as Lego? Um, and, and how do you really um, not only make it accessible to people who, wanna, who want to learn electronics, and there's a lot of tools that are out there today that do that, but how do you make it accessible to people who don't know they want to learn electronics? People who think they don't want to learn electronics, and particularly to the hardest um, group of all, which is kids. Um, the reason I say um, the, the hardest group of all is kids is basically kids will give you um, 10 seconds before they decide whether or not you're worthy of their attention. Um, and so I decided that the challenge was going to try to do this in five seconds. And uh, over the past many years, um, it's uh, over four years to date now, I've been developing little bits. The idea behind little bits is that um, they're electronic bricks. Each brick it has one simple function, light, sound, sensors, motors, various other things. And they're uh, color coded. So blue is power, green is output, and all you have to do is snap them together with magnets. So it, takes, it literally takes a few seconds to get started, and you, have, you don't program, you don't wire, you don't plug into a breadboard, and you can get started very, very quickly. Once you start um, cascading an input module with an output module, you can start to manipulate it. You, you put a dimmer and you start to activate light or a vibration motor after it, or a sound. You replace it with a sensor and suddenly you're manipulating things in the environment. And so it gives you actually a lot of power with very little, um, very little upfront um, investment in terms of time. Um, this took, um, the first three and a half years were entirely bootstrapped. Um, I was, um, first of all, I didn't know I had a product, and second of all, I, um, I really sort of wanted to see where this could go, so I, was, I begged and I borrowed and I begged some more um, and launched the first starter kit on the market with the help of SparkFun, uh, who's here somewhere, Nathan is here somewhere. And so, um, so we launched the first kit on the market and we were hoping that people would buy them. Um, and uh, when the first started kits came out, we didn't really know how the response was gonna go. I had a hunch because I had a lot of people coming up to me, um, but with the, the result has been much, much more, more overwhelming than was expected. We launched this in September of 2011, and I'll take you a bit through about what we've been doing since then. The idea behind Little Bits is that it's a library. So much like software is a library where you have snippets and you add them together, and object-oriented software allowed you to, to build on other people's development and build much more complex uh, software, we're doing the same thing with hardware. So the more there are of them, the more diverse and the more uh, powerful the, uh, the applications that you can create become. I'll show you some of the projects. Part of the, uh, the, uh, the response that I would say was very overwhelming and exciting is some of the videos that we've been getting people uh, submitting to us. <laughs> Do you like that? This is, so we say that little bits is uh, for, uh, three year, uh, for six years and up. We don't recommend them for three years, uh, for younger than three years old because there's a choking hazard and yet we've been getting videos from kids that are two years old and one and a half years old sending us. So I don't condone it, but I'd like to show it off. What's the invention you have there? Uh, it's a turner, a light switch, and one thing, one thing that has a green button and then another that connects to a fan that turns it on. I see. And they both work. See? And then this one. So there's a fan at the end of it that you cool. can really see right now. But once you have to turn it on, you have to turn it on. 
the thing that's really exciting is that um, because we're doing this really fast, we start to ambush kids into learning. And so it's really, <laughs> it's really kind of this very covert process that we're going for. So this is, I can't, I don't have much time. I'm going to show you some of the, pro the more exciting stuff that you could do is when you start combining little bits with other materials. So this is a project that was made by a six-year-old, Bella, that had no experience in electronics whatsoever. She has a pressure sensor in the tongue, two LEDs, a vibration motor in the, um, in the Christmas bell, and a DC motor in the back. And basically, it's, she calls it a naughty cat. <laughs> So there's a bunch of videos that you can see online. Um, we've, we've been doing these workshops. So this is a workshop that we did a few weeks ago called Techno Jungle, where we had kids between 6 and 12 start to make animals uh, that were, this is how this came about, uh, animals that, that had behaviors. And they start to really think about interaction. They start to think about logic. They start to think about sensors and the environment and how they want to activate things. And it's very exciting. We now went from having just one kit um, to now having over 30 products, including two, two different kits uh, and about uh, 28 uh, different modules. Uh, we just transitioned to uh, partnering with, with, um, with a very, very exciting manufacturing and logistics partner, PCH, who are, um, well, Liam and I, I'm Rick right here, so they'll be talking in a bit. And we're basically looking to, to go really global uh, because we want to try to get in every school and try to get them in the hands of every kid and really start the learning process very early. We, um, you can see some of the stuff on the website. Um, the, the thing that we're also focusing on is getting projects as the excuse to get kids to collaborate. Uh, so we have a part of the website that's a community platform where you can put up projects with step-by-step -step guides of things that you can make. Um, for example, this step-by-step -step guide of how to make a, um, um, a, a Mother's Day card uh, for Mother's Day. We're doing also something for Father's Day with Wired, where we're making uh, kits uh, that, are, um, that are special with some activities that fathers can do with their kids. And we have um, something exciting on the website, which is um, a page where you put up ideas for dream bits that you'd like. So some of this really sort of helps the helps the kids to start imagine what are the things that are possible and really break out of this behavior that is only about consuming electronics and really start to imagine them. So anything from um, a fart alarm to a penguin finder uh, to a triple axis accelerometer uh, to um, a temperature sensor that, uh, uh, that, that senses when a mother came into the room. All sorts of different things. Um, and we're excited to start building at least some of the feasible ones uh, and, and get kids excited into the process. So we're going to be at Maker Faire and we're going to be running workshops. So I invite you all to come see us. And thank you. <laughs>